What is up everybody? Welcome back to the garage and we have another install for you guys today. While I'm waiting on stuff to do the supercharger, um, my pulley and whatnot to get that finished, one thing we have to keep in mind is to keep this oil cool in this car. So today we're going to be installing Track Dog Racing standalone oil cooler. Standalone is not the proper word, but it's an oil cooler nonetheless. And we're just going to do an install video. Should be pretty simple and I'm excited to get this done. Now, Track Dog Racing, like always provides you with everything you need to install this to your OEM Mazda Miata. Like I said before, mine is a little different. As you can see, if you've been following along, you know that there's a lot of different things to this car. We're gonna be using a lot of the stuff they provide you. There's just gonna be a few things that are minorly different. Um, actually, I think in this kit, everything's gonna be the same, but one thing, I'm not gonna have a spot to bolt the bracket 100% uh, firm like you would on your factory NA or MB Miata. So let's get started. So in the kit, they provide a TDR oil cooler, the oil cooler bracket, a half inch hose, an oil filter sandwich plate, an oil filter by Wix, plumbing or ducting work that you need to duct all the stuff together and your fittings and nuts and bolts and everything you'll need to fully install this system. The first thing we're gonna start with is the oil cooler sandwich plate. Um, this one is a little beat up, which might be my fault partly. This, these boxes have been sitting around for a while. Anyways, first thing we're gonna do is get these all situated and cleaned up. Um, as you see from just machining, this is dirty. So make sure you just clean this off. This is with any new part, at least any new machine part, make sure you clean them before installing them in your car. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install these properly. Um, what I mean by that is I'm going to use the set here. Um, I believe these are auxiliaries. You can either run them downward or outward. Um, depending on the model you have, you might have a temperature um, sensor pole on the side. So there's that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these cleaned up and I'm gonna get some thread sealant and I'm gonna tighten these, um, basically a thread lock. And I'm gonna tighten this on here this way, make sure they're sealed and not coming off. And I'm gonna do that for both these sets and these sets. So using the thread sealant they provide you, I'm just gonna add a dab of it to here. Go to install to this. Do the same for the second one here. All right, now I wish I had a table vise, but I don't, out of all the things I do not have. So I'm gonna take this 24 inch socket here and I'm going to snug it down the best I can. Now that I got those two installed, I'm gonna do the same thing for these two right here. Now that those are on there, I'm gonna do the same thing. Gonna tighten down as best as I can. Um, if you have a table vise, I highly recommend it. If you don't, well, just tighten down the best you can. And definitely check on it when you have it installed. So now that you have this installed, okay. So now we're going to be working on the oil cooler, which means attaching it to the bracket and getting all the fittings attached to this before we install it into the car. So they have everything prepackaged. We're going to get these 90 degree elbows out first and we're gonna seal these off and get these installed on here. All right. And these are MPT fittings, so do not, like you don't have to freaking over tighten these. They'll go in just fine. All right, so I kind of got these on there. Um, next, I'm going to get this bracket on. So once I get the bracket on, we'll get this mounted up and then I can adjust these and tighten them to where they need to be. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the bracket, which is a pretty simple install. Um, for the most part, it sits like this and your cooler sits like so. So you can see that these line up the bottom right here and right here. And then these, go underneath the tabs on the oil cooler, go underneath the tabs on the bracket and you'll bolt them down with the provided hardware. 
the provided hardware is these right here to use. You'll have five and five, but you're only gonna use four for now. So you use four nuts and four of these. And for the two bolts on the bottom, you're gonna use these longer two brass ones that are individually wrapped. Well, they're not brass, but they're bronze colored, like so. get these tightened down but for the most part this is what it should look like like that and we're just gonna get these four bolts on top and bottom tightened down now I gotta figure ew gross stock brakes I need better lighting I need to mount like lights to this wall here but stock brakes are gross so the next step which is gonna be kind of a pain to film is to remove the oil filter Get all this oil out. Honestly, I need to change the oil on this thing anyways. Maybe get some renewable fluid. Maybe get some renewable lube. Today, Junior! Maybe get some renewable lubricants up in this beach. <laughs> Yummy. Gross. What we're gonna do is get this seal lubed up and get that mounted to the plate. As you can see, there's the oil filter housing. Something like this. There we go. There we go, that works a lot better. All right, cool. Not too shabby. So I'm not gonna tighten this yet because I want to keep it a little loose for when I install the hoses. I want it to be able to rotate a little bit more comfortably and then I'll get everything tightened down and then I'll snug that bolt down. Now that that's installed, now we're going to install the oil cooler. So now that the oil cooler plate is on the side of the block, we're going to install the hoses or the fittings onto the hoses using these two fittings here and these clamps here. We're going to leave this connected and whatnot, uh, but we're gonna get these pressed on and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the fittings here, um, they're pressed in and what I like to do is lube this with some type of grease or whatever. And if you don't have grease, I've always liked to use chapstick. So lube the end with chapstick and then you're going to insert the fitting into here and you can use the frame like so to like push the fittings in uh, I'll give you an example of that here in a second, but let's get these fittings started. What I wanted up doing is pressing this on the ground like so and putting my body weight onto it and pushing down until I got it flush like so. So then now we'll slide the clamp up and lock it in place. We'll do the same thing for the other side. Okay, so here comes the fun part um, is getting these fittings installed. So first thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit of thread sealant to this because you can never be too careful. And I kind of like to take precautions, make sure nothing leaks, especially on track, because these stuff could lead to catastrophic failures. And we do not want catastrophic failures on track. We do not want to ruin track time for everyone. So now I'm just gonna feed these lines kind of through the sway bar area. I will show you guys where I fed them through here in a second. Here's one line here. This is why we leave this loose. Gives a better angle. Ah, there we go. So, I'm gonna get that tightened down. You know, it's funny, I'm pretty sure I have an A wrench somewhere, but you know what? <laughs> we'll just send it with this. There we go. Now that I got that where I want it to, I'm gonna leave this loose still, because like I said, I don't know exactly how I want it. I want it kind of like that, but I also don't want anything to rub, so. But anyways, let's get to the cooler part and the cooler mounting. So, as you can see, you run the lines through the top of the sway bar bracket, I guess, mounting point area, a little factory bracket here. Um, and then it goes up and under. 
to that. And the cooler will go in this area inside. So let's go get the cooler and get that mounted. Okay, so now you can see the lines are in. We are going to install the bracket here. And we're gonna use this pre-existing uh, heat shield bolt or heat shield bolt hole. Uh, and then we're gonna use the supplied bolts they give you to mount it right like so. Now that I got it all tucked the way I want it, as you can see, there's a bunch of excess uh, hose. So I'm gonna kind of get it to where, uh, obviously this pump has to rotate downwards like so. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of extra room. I'm kind of probably gonna cut it about here-ish and then um, get the barbs fittings on here and then get it attached to this. And then we'll get that all nice and squared away once we get these settled. A little tip, um, same thing, I'm gonna grease these, but a little tip you can do is kind of heat up the hose a little bit. It'll make it a little easier to install the fitting. Now you're only lightly heating it up. You don't wanna like melt the hose because then you're defeating the whole purpose. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. And then we get this fitting pressed in here. So now I got this all tightened up here and snug ran down through the frame underneath and to that uh, I'm going to tighten down the sandwich plate. Okay so I'm not really liking too much how this is ran if I'm being honest but we will see if this works. Um, hopefully it doesn't rub a hole in anything and if it does well I guess we got to run some steel braided lines and solve that problem but for now this is where we're going to put it and lock that down and get the oil filter on. All right. So, got these tightened down, the two inlet lines and the oil filter on. I might relocate those to the bottom ones yet. I'm not 100% not sure, but they're on there. And so was the cooler. Got to make a bracket for this. This is what I was talking about. I don't have a factory bumper. Oops. I don't have a factory bumper, as you can see, so I don't really have a spot to mount this. So I'm going to have to come up with a bracket design, something to hold this up, whether it be running a bracket from here to there like from the top of this to the top of that or something. But once that gets done, uh, I'll have to run duct work and stuff like that to that. So there it is right there in all its glory. Okay guys, so all in all, I'm not gonna lie, it was a little bit difficult of an install. Uh, and the only reason why is because the intake manifold is completely blocking your access from the top down. So you're gonna have a little bit of a hard time getting that. I'm hoping some of the tips and tricks that I've taught you in this will help you out getting that installed um, and making your life a little bit easier. Um, but other than that, anyone can do it. There's no really heavy modification required. Um, it's literally just removing some parts, bolting on, and they have, like I said, really detailed instructions on how to do it. And I'm hoping that um, the combination of this video and their instructions that you can get it done in no time. And all in all, it probably took me maybe an hour and 45 minutes to two hours to do. I have a little bit more modification to do to make the factory brackets that they provide you with uh, work. But for your car, if you have an OEM application, OEM bumper, you can literally just bolt it straight from the bracket to the bumper. and It'll be good to go. And your oil temperatures will be down. You can track it a little harder and not have to worry about overheating it. And if you keep the factory coolant line, you're gonna also double your cooling efficiency with their radiator and the oil cooler combination. So thank you guys for watching. If you're interested in the Track Dog Racing Kit, I will leave a link in the description below. If you're interested in any AWR products, such as the AWR drop mounts, I will leave a link in the description and use code ZTRO at checkout for 10% off. If you're interested in anything Spike Performance, if you want a t-shirt, if you want hood louvers, if you want fender louvers, and if you want anything that they have on their website, I will leave a link in the description below. Hit them up and not only cool your car down, but look good doing it. Thank you guys for joining me on this journey of installing the Track Dog Racing oil cooler. I appreciate you watching. And if you like this video, leave a thumbs up. Don't forget to click the bell so you get notified when I post new videos. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for all my new subscribers. Thank you for everybody who continues watching. It makes me feel, I, I just feel so special that you guys are watching my videos 
and I'm reaching out to an audience and I might be teaching them something new and just sharing everything that I love to do and just posting it on. The, the whole reason I even did this was because I just enjoy installing new parts and just now that I have the ability to even just buy parts and install it, this is kind of like a childhood dream that I've always wanted to do. So I appreciate you guys for following. Get out there and do something, follow your dream and don't let anyone tell you anything different. Thank you guys. Peace out. And I'll see you on the track.